Welcome to another broadcast of the Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Thursday mornings at 9.30 at the Lorain County Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings, and as always, you are invited to attend. Would you like to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the June 22nd meeting of the Loring County Board of Commissioners. Betty, is it your dog today? Smart, smart, wow. smart little this dog. This is really a lorry dog. Yes, it is. <laughs> that you can kiss me. She was found in the North Ridgeville area. The, is it Rottweiler? You're slipping. Rottweiler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She's in cage 25, and she will be available on Saturday for adoption. It's a female. Isn't she a pretty dog? She is, and I don't, I think, I'm not so sure it's Rottweiler. I think she might have Australian Shepherd in her, because I have one at home, and she doesn't have a tail, and they're a lot of times born without one, and she's really smart for being so young. So, she's a cutie. I know, you might have to fight her for me. <laughs> Our thought for the day, you're welcome. it takes a long time to grow an old friend. That's true, isn't it, Sherry? <laughs> How long you been at it? <laughs> oh, long time. Too many years. Teresa? Uh, we have two public hearings today, one at 10 o'clock and one at 10.05 for Stone Ridge Estates Subdivision and Eagle Point Subdivision, both in Columbia Township, to place perpetual maintenance on detention-based ditch and outlet structure. Under resolutions number one, Job and Family Services Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Investments. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mrs. Blair. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Transfers. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Advances <clears throat> and repayments. So moved. Second. One. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Requisitions. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Travel expenses. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Bills. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Under the auditor, number nine, authorize a refund to Land American Lawyers title in the amount of $864.40 for an incorrect conveyance fee due to an error in the sale price. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Under the commissioners, authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary for employees within jurisdiction of Lorraine County Commissioners. Commissioners, I have a number of personnel actions uh, from Job and Family Services that we need to discuss in executive session. Uh, so at the conclusion of our regular board meeting, um, I'd like to uh, talk about uh, new hires at Job and Family Services and at Golden Acres. Uh, new cooks? Uh, we seem to go through a lot of them, don't we? Uh, them and the nurses' aides. Uh, and uh, also uh, update you on um, uh, where we are with uh, our negotiations with uh, one of our labor unions. Oh. <clears throat> Number 11, instruct the clerk to advertise for bids for renovations for Lorraine County Transportation Center, Phase 1, Selective Demolition and Exterior Repairs, notice to be published in the Chronicle Telegram on June 27th and July 4th, and to be open at 9 a.m. on July 25th in the Commissioner's Public Hearing Room. So moved. Second. Discussion. I have a question, um, Mr. Cortez. The money that we're 
going to be expending on the transportation center? Is that money set aside and in the bank ready to, to do all this? <coughs> or is it something that we're going to have to be taking out of our general fund? There will be a minor amount of money from the general fund. Um, we have uh, over $4 million in earmarks with FTA. One of the things we need to do is um, we'll advance the funds, and then we'll do a draw back from FTA. Uh, and well, we that's where we negotiated to only have one organization Correct. handling our funds instead of having to deal with two or three. Correct. So we did that a couple months ago. Yes, we did, sir. Um, but uh, in order to expedite the process, what, what we do is we, we, I guess we can get a, I guess, we can get a certificate of availability of funds by using the earmarks from FTA, uh, but it, it's much more um, agreeable to moving the project along to use a certificate of availability of funds here from Lorraine County and then do a draw on the funds from FTA. And the end result should be uh, minimal exposure to the general fund. I say minimal because we, we're trying to match FTA dollars with money already spent on the building and on the land and some of the work we've done. Uh, in all of my discussions with FTA, and I have uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, email traffic with them, it's, uh, they're indicating that that would be agreeable to them. But then things move past the people I'm working with, and I can't guarantee you that the match using the already expended funds for the match is going to be 100 percent acceptable all the way down the road. Right now, as indicated to me, though, we should be able to do that. If, we, if we're if we rejected on that, then we'll have to pick up 20 percent of the match uh, on, on the project. And Which will be how much? For this portion of the project? Uh, no, for, for the project. The, the complete project? Mm -hmm. Well, for the, if we used all the money we have right now, it would be about $800,000. Uh, this phase of the project is about $2.2 uh, which would expose us to about 440000 My concern is with the possible looming cuts that we might get because of the population shift, mm -hmm. is this is, do you think maybe we should wait on this until we find out if that's going to happen? Well, I, I have grave concerns over our fiscal, fiscal, ooh, mm -hmm. kind of fiscal <laughs> issues, uh, uh, as I've been, you know, discussing for about a year now. And uh, the early earmarks that we have received are starting to get very, very stale. And if we don't do something, we will lose that money. Uh, the reason we're only doing phase one, and we have multiple phases to this project, is because we actually some of the funding that we have, we can't even access yet. Now, we can do what they call a letter of non-prejudice, and we can ask to accelerate that money into the appropriation process to come to us earlier. But we have to be careful because that's an earmark. And, and, and it, later on, if we expend it and they agree to reimburse us, but they don't appropriate that money themselves, then we're exposed for that. And right. that, place, that place is significant liability on, on the county. So we're actually only using, right, for the phase one, the money that we know we can receive back right now. Um, so I don't think there's any exposure in this portion of the project. I'm pretty comfortable that we're going to be able to match with the price for the building. But we paid two. But there's no guarantee. Well, I got as much guarantee as I'm going to get from the federal government. Uh, the the uh, the $275,000 that we pay for the building should be enough of a match for this initial $2.2 million thereabouts. And then we have about $675,000 in various land purchases to support the project that we can use to match other money. But that would be in different phases. Um, as far as, as waiting, that's a decision for the board. Uh, but I will tell you that the original million dollar earmark is, is getting quite stale. We've right. had it for about four or five years, and if we do not get moving, uh, we'll lose that earmark. And the reason we weren't moving, since I said that, let me let me back up and explain why we haven't been moving. We've been trying to line up enough money to make a project worthwhile doing down there. The original million dollars didn't get us very far. We, with, with four million dollars, we're going to be able to do a significant portion of the work that needs to be done down there, and we'll actually end up with a building that's inhabitable and usable. Uh, but we're, we're a long way from putting train platforms up on the tracks and so forth. We don't have money for those phases yet. But I believe in the money that we have, we should be able to accomplish um, 
the building renovations, stabilizing the building, doing the interior of the building, and quite possibly all the parking issues and, and so forth. Uh, but the uh, the pla train platforms and elevators, all that, we still have to seek out more dollars. To well, that'll be future that. earmarks that we'll apply for, and if we expend already on the property now, it'll make it easier to get the earmarks to complete the project. Yes, if That's we get standard, moving. No different than what we do on NOAC board with the earmarks when they we got to show some the transportation issues. Exactly, we we, we got to demonstrate some <coughs> some uh, some action on this project. I, I met with uh, Senator DeWine's uh, staffers last week, and they were pleased with what they saw. When the early earmark is from Senator DeWine's office, the first one we received. They were pretty happy because uh, we demonstrated that we had all this going on, and we were going out to bid. Uh, I believe that we'll we'll gain additional support from our legislators if if they see that we not just got earmarks that we're not doing anything with, but that we're actually putting them some rubber to the to the road. Uh, and we're on the future high speed line anyway. We are federal on the federal government, so we, at we that are. point the money will be easier to access to finish the project. Uh, but uh, the, the, we still got a ways to go. Uh, but we have been able to line up over four million dollars worth of. Uh, uh, federal monies to support this project in Lorain County. It's just it's just taken a while, uh, and then we, as Commissioner Kalo indicated, we've been able to combine the revenue streams from the various activities through No Acker and ODOT, and get them all lined up so we're we're dealing with one one stream, one one set of administrators, so that we don't have a lot of confusion on that. And we had to go through, we had to do the Ohio Historical Review. We had to get sign off on there. We, it's been it's been a challenging project. Uh, uh, but obviously, when you're looking to use other people's money uh, rather than your own, uh, you got to wait in line. You got to do everything they want you to do, and we've been successful at that and and getting it done. I think you've done a wonderful job. So all in <clears throat> for the complete project, there's a possibility that we would be responsible for eight hundred thousand for for the money we have now. I, if we get a full build out on the project and we were to do the platforms and have the nice, you know, Am Amtrak train pulling up and all that, it's probably going to cost about eight million dollars. Uh, right now, we don't have eight million dollars, so I'm only prefacing uh, what I anticipated on the four million, roughly four million we have. So, uh, but but I think the project eventually will will require about eight million dollars worth of funding to give you 100 percent of the potential from from the center. And then this portion, our, our liability could be how much? Uh, about 420,000. About 420, well, uh, it's 20 percent. Right, or whatever the build-out is. Whatever the build-out is. Now, again, I, you know, I, if I was 100 percent, if I could, if I, if I trusted the people 100 percent, I would say there's no liability here. I'm, I'm about 95, 96 percent sure that we're going to be able to use those matches, uh, but things change down there. Administrators change, you know, over, people that are overviewing things change. Right now, uh, uh, the people that are our contact points and have indicated to us that we will be able to match with the dollars that are in the in, in the project currently on those dollars. Uh, I'm as comfortable as I'm going to be able to get to, to say that to you. If I wish I could do better, but. Uh, there's always a little bit of uncertainty. Well, speaking of change, another thing that can change is our funding stream with the shift in population, too. So, okay, that's all. Thank you. Ms. Kowski? No. Mr. Kalo? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Number 12, enact responsible contracting practices and best bid criteria procedures to be adhered to for awarding contracts for Lorain County Transportation <coughs> Center. So moved. I'll second, and I would like to have some discussion, please. From Mr. Cordes. Uh, do I have more to say? <laughs> yeah. What's? What, just tell us briefly what this means. <clears throat> well, responsible bidder criteria uh, goes to uh, um, drug-free workplaces and uh, qualifications of, of the workforce. It's it's uh, it's a set of criteria that each vendor has to meet to be able to bid a project so that everybody's bidding m more closely to, to uh, um, an even playing field. And uh, it ensures that we get the very best work, uh, workers on, on the job site uh, and that uh, both union and non-unionized uh, <coughs> workforces have to compete in the same with by the same criteria. We've used these before. We used Responsible Bidder on the Justice Center. We did very, very well on that. Um, I was a bit concerned that we 
about using it this time, uh, but I was able to gain a cooperation from FTA because uh, it was federal money. So normally you got to stay away from project labor agreements and responsible bidder and things like that with, with uh, federal dollars, but they have indicated that we can use the responsible bidder criteria, and these are the same criteria that we applied to the Justice Center with, with a lot of success. It, it makes, it, 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 I'm going to say, I'm not going to give you a definite, but in theory you're supposed to get a much better manageable workforce because you get, you, everybody is under the same guidelines, safety, drug-free, you know, things like that. Um, and uh, um, I'm encouraged uh, by the success we had the last time. The only thing we weren't able to do, and I was very disappointed, is we can't do local set-asides because it's federal dollars. Right. And I would really, really love to do local set-asides for Lorain County uh, employers, but federal government uh, will not give us that. We did make the inquiry. We, prob we already knew what the answer would be, but we felt compelled to ask anyway. We did, and clearly we were turned down on that, too. Thank you, Jim. Ms. Kowski. Well, since this is hand in hand with number 11, I voting no for this one also. Mrs. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalen. Aye. Number 13, instruct the clerk to advertise for bids for renovations for Lorain County Justice Center, Phase 4C, New 3rd Street and Middle Avenue, 3rd Street parking lots. Notice to be published in the Morning Journal on June 27th and July 4th and to be open at 10 a.m. on July 25th in the Commissioner's Public Hearing Room. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalen. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. 14, enact responsible contracting practices and best bid criteria procedures to be adhered for awarding contracts for Lorain County Justice Center, Phase 4C, New 3rd Street and Middle Avenue 3rd Street parking lots. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalen. Aye. Under Children and Families First Council, it should be FY07 instead of FY06. Approved contracts for FY07 Help Me Grow programs effective July 1st, 2006 through June 30th, 2007. One Catholic Charity Service Corp, $229,742.02. Larry City Health Department, $352,592.93. Emmanuel United Methodist Church, $44,109.54. Lorain City Department of Health, $399,971.40. MRDD, $88,144.14. And the Neighborhood House Association, $238,705.98. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalen. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Under Job and Family Services, approve and authorize Amendment Number 2 of Purchase a Service Agreement with Diversified Transportation Services, Inc., in the amount of $10,000 for the contract value not to exceed $212,000. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalen. Aye. Approve and enter into various Purchase of Service Agreements for Title 20 and TANF-funded services effective July 1, 2006 through June 30, 2007, and authorized director to execute on behalf of the board with prosecutor's approval as to form. One, Cambridge Home Health Services, Elyria for homemaker home health services in the amount not to exceed 20,000. Neighborhood House Association for emergency shelter services in the amount not to exceed 75,000. Safe Harbor of Lorain County for services to victims of domestic violence in the amount not to exceed 36,000 and Volunteer Guardianship Program of Lorain County for Adult Guardianship Services in the amount not to exceed 11000 So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kalen? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Uh, <coughs> Madam Clerk uh, and Madam Chair, um, Michael Mays, the new president and CEO from Neighborhood House Association is here. Michael, I'd just like you to stand up um, so that my fellow commissioners can see who you are oh. and welcome. He, I was at their meeting last night, and he said he was going to be here today because we had two items that affected his association on our uh, agenda. So, welcome. Thank you. Approve and enter into purchase of service agreements for TANF funded services effective July 1st, 2006 through June 30th, 2007, and authorize the director to execute on behalf of the board with prosecutor's approval as to form. One, Lorain County Furniture Bank, Lorain, in the amount not to exceed $14,294 to provide new and used furniture and appliances to low-income Lorain County residents. And Lorain County Office on Aging, in the amount not to exceed $60,329.22 for the Kinship Navigator Program. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mrs. Blair. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. 
Under solid waste, there is an amendment to this amount. Uh, approve application from Malaria East Little League for a grant in the amount of $3,219.84 for picnic tables made of recycled plastic lumber to be paid from the Buy Recycled Grants account. Are they getting half the amount of that's benches or? No. The, that's, that's the match. That's the, that's the full. <coughs> the full amount was six and their match yes. is three? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's the match amount. That was the total <laughs> purchase really price. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> that's okay. So moved. Okay. Second. <laughs> Any further? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Under Workforce Development, approve and enter an extension contract between Workforce Development Agency and Workforce Institute of Lorain County effective July 1, 2006 through June 30, 2007, the amount not to exceed $1,396,800. So moved. I'll second. Discussion? Mr. Cortez, I think, wants to say something. Well, we, sure. we have a function going on tomorrow that's being sponsored by your workforce <laughs> development. I'd like to give Vivian Alexander, who is here, an opportunity just to put one more pitch in uh, for it. And she's not knowing I'm going to do that, so hopefully she'll be able to wing it. Hi, Viv. Good morning. I was really trying to hide this here. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Vivian. Tomorrow, for those of you who do not know, we are having a staff development uh, function at Spitzer's and Stalker Center tomorrow. It's called the 2010 Meltdown. We received $10,000 from the state of Ohio to allow us to do some type of performance measures um, with our performance measures that we are to meet. And there are two of them that we have not, which is earnings. So we decided to put something together that we could talk about our economy for Lorain County to show, you know, the changes and what the future changes could be. So, so far it looks like it's pretty good. Uh, we have probably about 140 that will be attending, and um, I think it's <coughs> going to be a great event, and I hope to see everyone there. It's, uh, you guys have done a great job. I know you partnered with the One Stop out there. And, yes, I did forget to uh, leave that out. I think this is really our first undertaking on something this large. Uh, so uh, I hope everything goes well for you tomorrow. And, you have a very exciting speaker, I understand. Yes, and I will send each commissioner and Jim a copy of his book, The 2010 Meltdown. Well, thank you, because unfortunately I won't be able to yes. attend. I have a policy committee for solid waste tomorrow. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Thanks, commissioners. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Under Children's Services, authorize various additions and deletions of the personnel in Lorraine County Children's Services Department to utilize their Shell Oil Gasoline credit card, not to exceed 200, and the agency's MasterCard not to exceed 2,500 for the year 2006. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Under the engineer, approve and enter into various escrow agreements on behalf of Dave Gill, the developer, one for Stone Ridge Subdivision and two Eagle Point Subdivision in Columbia Township. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kalo. Aye. Approve and enter into the preliminary engineering agreement in the amount of 15000 with CSX Transportation, Inc. for the proposed roadway reconstruction widening of Griswold Road from two lanes to the three lanes from Lake Avenue East to Leona Street at CSX Transportation, Inc., milepost BJ156.18, Elyria. And this will be paid from professional services account. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Kale. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Approved change order number one in the amount of $343.20 to Signal Services, Inc. for Cable Road Traffic Signal Project to be paid from the engineer's projects account. So moved. Second. Discussion. Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Kale. Aye. I have a question. Okay. Number 23. I'm assuming that's engineers professional services account, correct? I said, I've just noticed you have engineers' projects. On Lisa's shaking her head, yes. Okay. okay, great, thanks. No worries. Okay. <laughs> counting his pennies. Except on behalf of Grafton Township Trustees, the improvements for Country Wood Subdivision, Liberty Excavating, Inc. is the developer. The developer has constructed the asphalt pavement and culvert along with the six-inch water line, which has been approved by the county engineer and accepted by the trustees. The inspection fees were paid on an overpayment of $4,495.77, which will be returned to Ms. Kovac on behalf of the developer. And the plat for Country Wood Subdivision are recorded in the Lorain County Records of Plats as follows. SD Lane with road number T290 extending from Mental Road, County Road 154 easterly, and then southerly a length of 
3,027.69 feet or .0573 miles to a cul-de-sac. And Casey Way with road T291 extending steadily from Estee Lane T290, length of 721.19 feet or 0 0.137 miles to a cul-de-sac. So moved. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Mr. Kaler? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. <laughs> Under Forensic Services, award bid to Shamutsu Scientific Instruments, Inc., Maryland, in the amount of $121,330.65 for gas chromatography and mass spectrometry, whatever, instruments for drug testing, both solid and liquid samples. Mr. Cortez, I, didn't you have a question about this the other day? Did you get that answered? <coughs> well, not exactly. Uh, we had uh, partnered with the prosecutor's office and with the courts to hire additional staff uh, for the forensic lab, do some criminal lab type work. Uh, and I'm just rehashing this because uh, for the public's sake and then to move our fingerprint person uh, into the forensic lab and also start you know, having like a crime lab portion of the forensic lab. And at that time we agreed to purchase this type of equipment. I, was, I have not been able to find my budget sheet to see if this was within the budget guidelines but the more I thought about it, it was bid. Right. Whether it's in the budget guidelines or not, we do have money in the account. Um, we can, I can send them back out for a few dollars or this is what the equipment's going to cost. Maybe they were a little low on what they thought it would cost. I don't think that they misled anybody. I just thought we were a little bit lower on the price. But this is what the equipment costs. And if we're going to finish that partnership, we need to do that. And plus, they're, they're getting ready to uh, work cooperatively with us and hire an additional employee. That employee will be hired by the Board of Commissioners, but we'll be detailed over to the crime lab as part of the partnership working collaboratively together. And so this I, gives us the ability to speed up processing of evidence, all except DNA, correct? Absolutely. It's it's essential that we Blood, do that. Urine. Yes. Okay. Uh, again, I was, uh, I, my concern really was unfounded, and we do have the resources to do this within the crime lab funds. Okay. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Thanks. Ms. Cassie? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Okay, I guess we're going to go to our 10 o'clock public hearing. Sorry. We're going to have to hear from Jim. Okay. <laughs> he might be winded, so we'll do this first. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to pay for it. 10 o'clock public hearing on the place, the detention, ditch, and outlet structure for Stone Ridge Estate Subdivision, Columbia Township. The Rain County engineer, by letter dated April 17th, indicated that the developer requested that the detention, ditch, and outlet structure be placed on perpetual maintenance in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 6131.63. Ditch was constructed for 29 sublots. The cost of the ditch and outlet structure is 23,200. Annual maintenance assessment will be 5%, which is 1,160 for a total of $40 per year on each sublot. This money would stay in account through the county auditor's office, which the engineer would use for any repairs or maintenance. Once a year, the engineer's office will inspect the facility and prepare an annual report. The maintenance fee can be collected each year depending on the engineer's annual report of work needed and the funds available. The balance in the account can not exceed 20% of the original cost. If approved, this assessment will be put on 2006 tax duplicate collectible for the year 2007. Resolution number 06414A, adopted May 25th, scheduled this hearing. One property owner, which was Stone Ridge Lakes LLC, was notified by certified mail on May 31st, and the notice was published in the Chronicle Telegram on June 7th and 15th, 2006. Thank you, Teresa. If anybody's going to give testimony, would you stand now and let Jerry Ennis swear you in? Or, um, yeah, swear you in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give shall be the truth, as you shall answer unto God, or under penalty of the law of perjury? Uh, someone from the engineer's office, would you like to come up and detail any further information? Uh, Wayne Belletti, County Engineer's Office. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the first one is Stone Ridge uh, subdivision. This will involve 29 sublots will drain to a uh, detention ditch, which the county wants to maintain the engineer's office. And in order to do this, we want to charge the uh, sublots $40 each per year. And this will be going on their taxes, and it will be collected $20 a half. And we're trying to do this before the lots are sold so we can have everything approved. Thank you, Wayne. 
Thank you. Anyone else wishing to give testimony? Good morning. Uh, my name is Dale Rundle. I'm a trustee in Columbia Township. Um, we have no problem with the contract and everything, but there's one thing that we want you to be aware of. Uh, a couple months ago, we had something called the Roth Ditch that was uh, brought in front of you. We will meet again on August 3rd uh, to fix that up. But that drains into this uh, ditch that they're putting in. So we wanted you to be aware of that. And I was also wondering if that Mar or August 3rd meeting could be either moved up one week or back one week because all three trustees would be out of town that week. Do we already advertise for that? We didn't advertise now for it. Now it's a continuance. Mm -hmm. we can yeah, it's a continuance. I haven't sent the letters out, actually. They're going out June 30th, so it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Want to go August 10th? Sure. August that 10th. would be fine with us. Okay. We'll be back in town. <laughs> we need a motion. Make Do a motion to uh, make it August 10th rather than 3rd? Yes. I'll, I'll second that to continue that Roth ditch hearing. And you're going to notify those people, Teresa? Mm, I already got the letters, but I'll redo them, yes. Oh, thank you. Change the date. You owe Teresa. She has to redo <laughs> those letters. I haven't sent them, but they're just all in letters. Ms. <laughs> <laughs> Kasky? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Caleb? Aye. Okay. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to make any comments regarding this ditch? I think that this is uh, a smart procedure to do this before the lots are sold. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, we need to close the public hearing. Mm -hmm. All second. Mm -hmm. Ms. Kowski? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. And then? Now we need to do an equal point. Well, we no, make a approve. motion to approve this oh. if you like. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? Ms. Kowski? Aye. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mr. Kayla? Aye. Eagle Point, same thing, placed attention ditch and outlet structure for perpetual maintenance. Lorraine County Engineer, by letter dated April 17th, indicated the developer requested this detention ditch with the outlet structure to be placed on perpetual maintenance in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 6131.63. The ditch was constructed for 16 sublots. The cost of the ditch and outlet structure is 10000 The annual maintenance will be 5%, which is 500 for a total of $31.25 per year on each 16 sublots. This money would stay in account through the county auditor's office, which the engineer would use for any repairs or maintenance. Once a year, the engineer's office will inspect the facility and prepare an annual report. Maintenance fee can be collected each year depending on the engineer's annual report of work needed and the funds available. The balance in the account cannot exceed 20% of the original cost in construction. If approved, the assessment will be put on the 2006 tax duplicate collectible for 2007. Resolution 06414B adopted May 25th scheduled this hearing. Two property owners for Eagle Point Estates and Mr. and Mrs. Gill were notified by certified mail on May 31st, and the notice was published in the Chronicle Telegram on June 8th and 15th. Thank you, Teresa. The, again, if anybody's going to give testimony, you need to stand and have Mr. Innes swear you in. To each of you swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give shall be the truth, that you shall answer unto God or in the penalty of the law of perjury. Okay. Wayne, do you want to come up and... Thank you. Thank you. This uh, subdivision is in Columbia Township, located a mile and a half south of Sprague Road on State Route 252. It's got 16 sublots, and each lot will be assessed $31.25 per year. Also, this subdivision has no lots sold either. So we're trying to get that approved first. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Sir, did you want to come up and did you have something you'd like to add? The developer two questions about it. Actually, sublots one, two, and three, we were not going to be charged because that would be here is your attention to you based on their property. It's just going to be the fourth or sixteenth. Is that going to change the cost per? No, that's what they already figured out. Okay. 
commissioners any questions mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> seeing no one else i move to close the public hearing second Ms. Kowski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Uh, make a motion to put Eagle Point on a perpetual maintenance. Second. Discussion? Ms. Kowski. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Ms. Blair. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. Yes, yeah, sorry. Ms. Kowski. She says, Aye. 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 Do we have to? <laughs> think about it. Oh. <laughs> uh, commissioners on, uh, I believe it was Tuesday, uh, had the opportunity to go to Mansfield, and Commissioner Blair went uh, with us and Mr. Twining uh, to <clears throat> look over their airport operations and uh, some of their industrial parks that surround their airport and what they're doing down there and. Uh, how they've gone about uh, uh, maximizing the potential of their resources down there. It was a, it was a uh, very enlightening trip. Uh, their industrial parks around their airport are, are expanding. I saw a lot of new development and buildings going, and I saw a lot of existing um, buildings there. My best guess uh, from from all the talking, because everybody's always so proud when they're touring here and taking you around, but you know they have several thousands of jobs around their airport and their industrial park and, and, it, and it continues to grow because they they bought up large tracts of land and use HUD monies and uh, it's, it looks like they've been on about a 10-12 year plan uh, to progress to the point they are. Uh, we then had lunch at the airport cafe because they have a little cafe there and I toured the terminal and some of the facilities and um, I was really uh, really surprised at just you know how much can be done around that and we would we're going to we were making these little trips trying to figure out a game plan for the commissioners on you know just how to tackle uh, the situation with the airport and i don't know if mr twining has anything additional to add um uh, and maybe commissioner blair wants to say something in her report about it but uh i saw a huge potential uh and unmet potential and if we could do something close here would be real good for the community well we do have somewhat of a problem of doing an industrial park on our airport property do we not well Selling issues yes be, <laughs> we've been they've been marketing uh the airport all these years for an industrial park but it's zoned for residential and agricultural so there's no way we could even put an industrial park there if we wanted to well uh, that's a very excellent point <laughs> uh, beat me to the punch commissioner oh. that was my line <laughs> yesterday uh uh, at the uh, airport board meeting, uh, we terminated our relationship with King Realty. No, no reflection upon King Realty, but uh, uh, we uh, had Johnson Aviation. We instructed Johnson Aviation to take the signs down and uh, to stop marketing the property the way it's being marketed. The, the, the campaign is incorrect to begin with, number one. And number two, uh, we don't really have anything to market yet. Uh, the the uh, We also... Uh, I have had to community development began the process of looking at w what kind of zoning we need on the airport. We have some, we have some uh, rights as a potential public utility if we have aviation related businesses come to the airport. But the industrial park was not envisioned to have aviation related uh, businesses there. It was envisioned to have businesses that wanted to use the aviation facilities. Uh, and as such, that industrial park definitely needs to take a look at what's going to be zoned and so you can put something there. There's really nothing to market until we get that part. In fact, uh, we talked about possibly doing a spec building with our transit maintenance uh, folks and putting that out there. We can't even put that out there. I think we need to get in contact with the trustees and see if they'd be willing and to, to do the rezoning that needs to be done out there. Dick Williams attended the airport meeting yesterday. Okay. We're going to have a meeting with him, and Mr. Twining is already starting the process. Uh, it's going to take time, and it's going to take extensive dialogue, and uh, hopefully it won't be too tenacious of an issue, but it's got to be done. Also, yesterday we, as the airport board, authorized uh, Johnston Aviation as our contracted manager to begin to aggressively pursue the FAA for, air, for a runway extension. Um, it needs to be done. Uh, we're getting more and more inquiries. We're not able to land the smaller aircraft, uh, not smaller aircraft, but the jets. 
on the on the on the runway we have, and we need to get into the funding pipeline. That's kind of scary because there's always needs to be a match. But my understanding right now is that we thought there was 90 percent money out there, but we were informed yesterday, Ron, that there's possibly 95 percent money out there. Correct? Yes. Uh, so they may. It, the county may have to take a look at muscling up on that 5%. But if you don't get the airport runway extension down there, we don't get into the pipeline for that funding, and it'll take a couple years to get that, yeah, you're not going to be able to produce much of anything out that airport. And while you talk about runway extension, elaborate just exactly what you have in mind, because when we were in Mansfield, they have two runways. Yes. One is 9,000 feet, and the other one is how many? It's, it's I think it was 6,000. 6,000. Bo and both uh, larger than our existing. Yes. Uh, the, I think the best we can do with the property that's out there is about 6,250 feet. That sound about right, Ron? Just short of that. Right. Give or take a couple inches. Uh, uh, but that's about as large. But that's enough for, for what we need out there for the next few years to see what kind of growth patterns we, we, we would hope to see out there. But. Uh, we're just not going to be able to do anything with the current situation. And with the current zoning, it's going to be difficult. And um, there's, just, there's just issues that need to be dealt with. So as a board yesterday, uh, we, we told them to begin the process of aggressively moving in that area. Clearly, the county is going to have to uh, supply some economic assistance. And you know, very soon, you're, you're going to own the airport. Uh, full out anyway that's almost completed the transition's almost complete from my understanding um, it, it we either need to take aggressive moves and get it going or my opinion is we need to put a padlock on the front gate uh, it, there's, there's, you got less than a hundred thousand dollars of revenue coming in and forty two thousand that's from farming uh, you got tens of millions of dollars I think the, the assets out there are valued at eleven million dollars Ron eleven million Twelve million in assets. The county is just under seven million. Both the city of Elyria and city of Lorraine are right around one point two million. The runway extension, the maximum you can do with the present land holding you have now and the the configuration of roadways, is one thousand two hundred and twenty-five feet. So I think technically that would be at six thousand two twenty-five. We have to do that to the east rather than to the west um, because the bank of lights that uh, are set there in order to move those even as much as or as little as one inch would cost substantial money um, to do that. We're talking close to a million dollars to move those. So it won't go closer towards Oberlin Road or the city of Oberlin. It would go more towards um, West, Riv, or West Ridge Road. And we thought at one point there was an additional space for 2,000. But my understanding, uh, after 9-11, the uh, FAA requirements for safety zone reduced that from 2,000 to that 12 to 25. And we're looking at that. That will allow us to land Beechcraft aircrafts, which is one of the hot commodities that we have right now. Another big problem is that it's currently our understanding that the FAA has under review whether they're going to allow us to continue to sublease the land for farming. And if if they end that practice and, and tell us that we can't do it anymore, we're going to be down to fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year in total revenue at the airport. I don't know how you can operate anything on those kind of numbers. Period. Uh, so I don't mean to give you bad news, commissioners, but I just want to give you. Some factual news. Uh, Talk so about the NASA Glenn. Expand on something positive, Jim. Well, you know, being being in partnership with uh, NASA Glenn and this company that's uh, going to uh, uh, install the uh, uh, equipment out at the airport, at least will bring some profile to us. They selected Lorain County Regional Airport uh, out of all the uh, airports in Northeast Ohio. They feel that it's situated in an environment for growth. It's situated in an environment for um, uh, the potential to be, you know, much more and to be a, uh, what did they say, a second tier, to the second, second tier? Yeah, and it's a microwave-based system. Right. Uh, so uh, obviously they see the potential with the airport here in Lorain County and the growth patterns that are going on as a secondary airport to uh, Hopkins. And uh, so it'll be Lake, uh, Burke Lakefront, uh, 
Hopkins and, and us that have, are in the uh, uh, data loop on that. So that is very positive, especially when you get the attention of NASA. Well, that, that well, there's helps. also a new director of the Cleveland Hopkins Airport that uh, Mayor Jackson hired the other day, so maybe we should start some type of dialogue with that gentleman. He came from Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area. Yeah, I, I'll dialogue with anybody who can help us. You like to talk, we know that, Jim. <laughs> Elizabeth, I know you're very interested in what goes on at that airport. Well, yes, the city of Oberlin is very interested in it, as I imagine any of the residents in the area around the airport would be. Um, it happened that I was not able to be at the meeting yesterday because it had been changed, as is noted on the agenda, that the airport board's meetings will no longer be the third Wednesday at noon at the airport, but will continue as 9 a.m. here at the administration building on the third Wednesday so that other people who might be interested in observers at these meetings will know the change. Um, I appreciate what Mr. Uh, Cordes has just uh, uh, given us information on uh, because, of course, as I said, we're all very interested. I have one question, however. Um, uh, my understanding was that the King Realty people were doing their marketing efforts without pay. Is this the case, and will they not be reimbursed in any fashion? I, I think you're you're accurate, and, and I'm sorry you missed the meeting. I understood that for, you did not get notified that the meeting, and as a regular, we try to notify you from up here, but I, I didn't think, I, I, I would hope that the airport people would know the regulars and notify, so well, I they, apologize that. They wouldn't have known, I'm sure, to. Uh, uh, John used to be good enough as to do that, but it was simply out of the goodness of his heart, so that's not the Well, uh, we'll, we'll make sure they, if anything moves again, because the regulars that come, we do try to pay attention and let them know, so I know you showed up yesterday for the meeting and had been changed, so I apologize for your inconvenience. It gave me an extra half hour's free time. I was happy for that. <laughs> uh, my understanding is that uh, they were on a contingency uh, for, for the work they performed and that they were not being paid. Uh, Mr. Twining looked over the marketing material and, and he had he had quite a quite a bit of uh, difficulty with the way it was prepared and what they were doing and quite frankly we're marking an industrial commercial site with residential agricultural zoning and uh, I don't think that's, we're not prepared at this point to, to do uh, anything and um, I'm somewhat thankful that a company hasn't come along and, and said we're ready to move in and then we get embarrassed into the fact that we're not ready and we don't have anything going. Ron, you can speak more to that. You, 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 you're, you're the subcommittee on that end of it, so why don't you explain a little further? The information that was uh, put out to the public for, by King Realty on behalf of the uh, airport board, which was the current board and the previous board, indicated that it was industrial park located off of Russia Road. It also then at the top of the page in bold colored letters said commercial land available. Um, you know, that's a contradiction of terms. While we could perhaps be exempt from local zoning. No one had really gone to New Russia Township where the land is located and sit down and, and talk to them at any official meeting to uh, get an understanding what their long terms were and see what the, the local interest might be. We've agreed um, upon completion of the uh, taking over the assets, we've agreed to start those discussions. We're not able to do that until that point, but we will sit down and talk with New Russia on our short-term and long-term vision for that. Um, it's presently zoned ag residential, and if a developer had come in, it's my opinion that they would still need to go through the process, and it would take them at least two months, maybe as long as four months, to seek rezoning or to be told that it is exempt and that they could move forward. In the meantime, if a, if a project is ready to, to be on the fast track because of business concerns, it would be difficult for them to do that. The other issue that we had some concerns with, the price that was indicated on there was uh, $3,600 per year per acre. Um, that's with no building. That would be $300 a month lease on the land per acre. And to me, I think that needs to be better flushed out depending on the nature of the business and the aviation-related 
aspect of the business um, I wasn't comfortable with a price being offered at this point so our position is once the uh, the county is able to move forward and there are some other preliminary things that we have to do beyond zoning um, that we need to be able to to offer to potential companies so that they can go to their banking their their lending institutions and take care of it so we've asked that uh, the King Realty back away from this project at now we're not saying that they can't come back or we won't reintroduce a relationship with them when we're ready but right now I think it was premature well excuse me for continuing this although my original question had a different emphasis and I will come back to it um, I had understood that there had been zoning discussions that the New Russia Township people were looking at the zoning because we were getting reports no further information and so forth and so on um, and uh, if the King Realty people were off on the wrong track. It seems to me that that's because perhaps they were inadequately informed or inadequately monitored as to what they were doing. My particular question was, will the King Realty people be reimbursed in any fashion for the considerable amount of money that I believe they had already put out, however mistakenly, uh, to publicize and uh, advertise the airport land? I, uh Again, I think I opened the conversation saying that it was no reflection on King Realty what was going on out there. So I think I did preface with that. I can't, I can't answer your question because I don't know because all this occurred prior to our tenure out there. So I don't I don't know what what was promised in the relationship, and I don't know what they've done. And you indicate considerable out of pocket. I I have no clue what that considerable out of pocket would be. The only thing I'm aware of is that they put a sign at each end of the airport, big signs out there. Uh, that actually said King Realty bigger than it said commercial property uh, and uh, that they have a, a website that has some information on it and I don't know of anything else they've done. Maybe Mr. Twining is aware of more but I'm, I'm not aware <coughs> of any. I, I am Mr. Cortez. I, I attended a few of the airport meetings along the way and King Realty was there and at one point I think it was like six or seven thousand dollars that they had put into their marketing for this project but I used to be a realtor and, and you, you spend your gas money, you spend your advertising money and you don't get paid unless you sell a house and wait till that house transfers. So you're kind of, you know, putting all your, your money out there up front not knowing if you're going to get paid. If, if we hire a marketing, another marketing firm and they come in with a buyer or, or, or a, a business, I'm sure they'll get their share. But I would imagine that they wouldn't get any type of reimbursement whatsoever. If, if there's a contract, because we're, we're, we're kind of having to assume all contracts with the change at the airport, if there's a contract, obviously we'll have to address terms and conditions in the contract. And I agree with you, though, uh, a lot of this is speculation when you get involved in these relationships and uh, sometimes resources are consumed in a, in a certain pursuit. But uh, to address an, part of your question, I would think that if I was marketing a you know, the property, I would actually check and make sure what I was marketing was was zoned and, and ready to go with what I was selling. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be easy on this whole issue, but this whole thing is very, very confusing to me, how we got an industrial park that we're able to grow corn or build houses on, and, uh, and, and what participation the realty company had with with who made those decisions, I really don't know. So I'm just get, trying to get a clean slate and get this thing moving and get it back where it needs to be. And it's going to take a considerable amount of time. That industrial park supposedly has been out there for a couple of years ready for somebody to build out there and it, it just isn't there. Well, I would simply suggest perhaps a close review of the various minutes and so on of the meetings over the past few years might shed some light on this. I agree with you. Thank you. The answer to the question on the zoning with New Russia Township, New Russia Township hired Pogemeyer Design Firm either two or three years ago, and Elizabeth is absolutely right. They've worked with the county prosecutor and made a determination that the airport is viewed legally as a public utility. Um, their stance is that they're likely going to either retain the current zoning, the last set of drawings that came out for New Russia Township on its zoning showed it as airport exempt, 
we've been asking questions what does that mean but at this point that's a proposal it's never been submitted for review either by their planning commission their trustees or the county planning commission for its consideration so at this point while there's been extensive discussions for two two and a half years that zoning is still not there the current zoning is ag residential and my understanding of the potential exemption because that exemption was made by by court order so it wasn't made by law uh, it was made by court law uh, is that it would have to be a an aviation related business that is they would have to be producing product that was used in the aviation environment uh, to be able to claim it as an exemption so if or engage in a aviation activity so while we would probably have some ability to uh, do some things directly on the airport property with FBOs and, and charter jet and things like that and claim that exemption, which will probably be contested anyway. Uh, if we put a company out there producing widgets that had nothing to do with the air, uh, with airport operations or aviation industry, we definitely would not be able to claim that exemption. Uh, so I just want to try to g give you some information to, you know, to keep you informed on, on what we're doing with, w with that uh, as we transition uh, more fully. And we're, we're going to have to have a lot of decisions uh, made and a lot of discussions uh, with the airport in the future. Thanks, Commissioners. Madam Chairman? Yes. If I can confuse this issue even more. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, in addition to the utility exemption as an airport, uh, once the point becomes where the county owns that property, you then get a second type of uh, exemption that comes into play, uh, which is a governmental exemption. And it's kind of a qualified thing where uh, you balance the need that the government has to use the property like versus, the domain kind of versus the need to maintain the integrity of the zoning and those two issues are balanced. It's much like the issue that occurred in Brownhelm Township when the Turnpike wanted to put Baumhart Road in there. They were technically barred by the zoning, um, but the uh, court in that case determined that the need by the Turnpike Commission was, was greater. So there's a whole new bevy of issues that come into play there, but as Mr. Twining indicated, um, we're trying to keep and work together with, keep the uh, uh, New Russia Township officials informed and work with them and kind of wade our way through this thing. Thank you, Mr. Ennis. That was all your report, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? I knew we should have skipped them. <laughs> See? I tried. <laughs> I'm just saying, ooh, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ennis? Um, I do have, Mr. Flanagan needs to meet with the commissioners regarding a pending litigation issue, and I need to update you on a matter also uh, for executive session. Okay. Commissioner's report. I have no report today. Um, had a busy week. We started last week at uh, TAC, which is a uh, planning committee with NOACA that I serve on with Commissioner Blair and heard a great proposal from the Cleveland Port Authority about ferry service from the downtown area to Port Stanley, Canada, which would save a ton of time on freight and expensive fuel. They did a very nice program, about an hour and a half. Very contentious meeting, though. Uh, first time I'd ever seen something go where they had to count the no votes versus the yes votes that passed some. So it was very interesting. My first time in a year and a half going through a process like that, <laughs> use of government in different uh, political jurisdictions, deciding what's best for another. Uh, boy, what else did we have this week? Uh, I got the opportunity to swear a new Lorain County Alcohol and Drug Board members last evening. Uh, Elaine Jorgensen invited me to do that, which was very nice. A lot of dedicated people spending a lot of their off time doing that type of <laughs> issue which is very important in our community. Uh, Vivian Alexander was there. Uh, she's a member of the Alcohol and Drug Board. And I had the opportunity to go to the Italian Cultural Dinner last night for Lorraine International Festival. And it was quite entertaining. Uh, just a wonderful evening. The Italian music, great food from DeLuca's. And I can't wait for the International Festival this weekend. Great, Commissioner. Thank you, Ted. Uh, <clears throat> 
Monday I enjoyed the international breakfast. Most especially I enjoyed Jack Bradley's daughter, who has a name, but I don't have it in Jacqueline. front of me. Jacqueline. Yes. What an accomplished uh, soloist she is. And uh, from common everyday songs to a little opera she threw in. Beautiful. Excellent. Uh, there was a speaker there, but she far out, Sean. <laughs> and on Sunday, <clears throat> we're going to be in their national parade. Look for us. I think we'll probably have a dog or two we'll give you. <laughs> Plus some uh, other stuff. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I uh, attended the uh, Neighborhood House Association's 79th annual meeting and uh, got to meet Michael Mays, their new president and CEO. He's been on the job about a month. Uh, and he's going to come back to see us sometime in our public meeting just to say hello. And that was after the Golden Age Pensioners Annual Picnic and before the Farm Bureau's policy dinner. And uh, I'm going to give this information to Ron Twining. Um, it's their p uh, plan for uh, Ohio Agricultural Roadmap and their vision for 20 in 2030. And I like this for a vision working with government. It says Ohio state and local governments effectively balance the needs of business, the public, and the environment. Collaborative planning for long and short-term challenges and opportunities has resulted in a dynamic economy, thriving communities, and a clean environment. And I was saddened to learn last night that Jim Skeels is relocating to Hocking County as of August 1st. So I wish Jim uh, much good luck. Uh, I, I, he told me his wife has been there for the past two years, so I think he might miss her. Mm -hmm. And I think she has precedence over Lorraine County, but he will be missed. So um, OSU will be looking for a new ag agent. And uh, so I've spoken to Mr. Twining about that, and maybe we'll have some input in who comes to take his place since part of his salary is paid to our solid waste department. And that concludes my remarks for now. Thank you. Just to remind everybody that the commissioners will now be meeting on July 6th or August 30th. <coughs> so far. Four correspondence. Mm -hmm. The reading second. Go ahead. Hi. <laughs> Jeez, so Talk this, Mr. Caleb. Second. We'll just <laughs> Mr. Koski. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. Mr. Caleb. Aye. Public comment. Good morning, David. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I assume most of the people who use uh, David Ashenhurst Oberlin, people who would usually be viewing uh, the Saturday installment of the commissioner of the video of commissioners meetings, I think uh, many of them were in Juneteenth seeing you live uh, in Oberlin or at the Duct Tape Festival seeing you live, but not at that particular hour. I know that when they were running that uh, in Oberlin. Uh, on cable, you were with us, and we do appreciate it. Um, and uh, my advice to anyone who has the commissioners in the parade, uh, be sure to request that uh, emergency management agency vehicle. That the, the most comments I got about uh, the various uh, county agencies and departments that were represented in the Juneteenth parade, that was the one that uh, that got the most remark. So See, we get all dressed up and they like that vehicle. Sort of reminds me of the movie Stripes, doesn't it, David? It's that urban assault vehicle? Well, uh, <laughs> yes, but, but only the vehicle, not the people in it. <laughs> Tom um, Kelly's Bill Murray might be kind of neat. <laughs> yes, um, two other things briefly. Um, I have initiated some inquiries uh, in the past about the environmental strategic plan and the availability of it and distribution of it and we're working in Oberlin to get uh, several more copies of it because I think several of our boards and commissions uh, should have it and look at it as we in Oberlin try and integrate into larger county plans but one of the things um, that I notice is that there is a website uh, entry for the environmental strategic plan, but it is um, it's somewhat out of date in terms of the information it gives about the status of the plan, and I do hope that at some point uh, the plan will be available on the website as well, just because uh, that will save us either uh, costs in the Community Development Department for furnishing them to us or costs in the City of Oberlin for paying for them um, if we are trying to get uh, 
20 people looking at the plan instead of just a couple of people um, at, at a certain level in the office. So I would appreciate it if they still try and get that plan on. It's, it's been out now a couple of months, and I, I hope it isn't too difficult to do that. Um, the third thing I had today was to just ask a question about number 15. Um, uh, Mr. Kelleher, I, I see, is still here, and this is concerning the Children and Families Council and the uh, fiscal 2007 Help Me Grow programs. There are uh, these were approved earlier in the meeting um, without really much comment um, in this particular case. And having some experience with the varieties of things that these funds can support, um, I'm interested in what these sums are being used for. But, but I especially um, noted that uh, we have here represented several county agencies, also a couple of nonprofits including a faith-based nonprofit, but also a nonprofit in here that is a faith organization rather than a faith-based organization in, in terms of the allocation on number, number three. And um, I'd simply like a, just a little explanation of the nature of that contract, if that's possible. Good morning, Ken. Good morning. Again, I'm Ken Kelleher. Um, Children and Family Council were one of uh, 88 uh, councils funded by the state. Uh, we run various programs. The award that has just been issued by the uh, commissioners involves a proposal that Yvonne actually advertised. We opened for bid. And uh, all the uh, individuals that did receive money, Dave, uh, actually were in the program this year. Uh, Help Me Grow has state and federal dollars and it is a uh, program that has been around for quite some time and involves children at risk, zero to three, and uh, families involving those children as well. Um, the individuals that made their proposal have various um, services that they do. Uh, so any particular uh, agency or department can make their proposal. Uh, the county mental health, they're very active in service coordination um, in, the, in evaluation. So they might evaluate a child and, you know, these monies are involved with that. A manual, um, they do something a little bit differently. They're, they're involved with parenting. So their program goes out and helps the parents of the children zero to three. So each one of these different providers offers different services, okay? And again, these involve three money sources. To help me grow involves three money sources. And they're called general, it's a general fund, okay? Not our general fund, but the state general fund. Part C, which is more children at risk, and then TANF dollars. And uh, it all works into help me grow and out of the governor's office is where our council has been created, as, as it were, and the commissioners are our administrative agents. Um, did I answer your question? The, uh, Ken, well, yes, like sir. That. Some of the services that provide, like, do we still do respite with Catholic health partners? Yes, we do some respite involved with that. Mostly, probably the respite that you're thinking about, um, we also, one of the things council does is um, obviously we were involved with the uh, uh, blessing house, and um, when you say respite, that's you know that strikes me. But yes, there is some respite in this contract. Yeah. Also, uh, the two health departments and neighborhood house, uh, the bulk of their dollars go to service coordination. Correct. Correct. So there are service coordinators for three districts within Lorain County. All right, and they actually do the IPs, right? Uh, ISPs, yeah. ISPs, and then they get them out into the services that they need. You got the handle, Mr. Curtis. I, I just just uh, expanded a little bit more information what you have there, and the the uh, the Part C funding is for 
uh, developmental disability, yes. children with developmental disabilities, and the general revenue dollars from the state or the GRF dollars that he referred to, that's, the, as you said, the state general fund. Those are the best dollars. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ken. If I can quickly, as far as the environmental plan, I'll check. We were trying to get that posted on our website, which is under the commissioners. I believe the environmental plan or strategic plan that David spoke of may have been posted out there a long time ago by the CDM, the first consultant that we have. And if that's truly where it was, then we had another consultant that uh, finished the document, so we'll have them remove that out there. I'm, I'm here for a different reason, but my guess is that your question wasn't really answered, David. That you're, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought he was interested in knowing whether faith-based, whatever it was, I don't have my agenda in front of me, had any connection with criteria that were faith-based in the use of the money or in... <coughs> in excluding or including candidates for whatever that service was and so on. I, I can answer that question for you, Ken. You, I'll take that. Anybody can put together a program, whether it be a faith-based based organization, a nonprofit, a governmental entity, and put forth a proposal to provide services under the guidelines of, of uh, Help Me Grow. And if their proposal meets those guidelines and it's re reviewed by a subcommittee and it's deemed to be the best proposal, then they can provide those services. Uh, whether they're, what, what their affiliations are are not important to us. It's the services that are provided that we evaluate. Is that a better answer for you? Is it, David? Is that a, is that a better answer? <laughs> I don't think it is, but okay. we'll have to look at the uh, Shirley R. Johnson, Oberlin, I'm here to read a statement. There have been several interesting stories in an editorial in the Illyria Chronicle Telegram about the county commissioner's meeting with the sheriff's department um, covering such topics as budget cuts, decreased road patrols, increased township cost sharing, and so on. These meetings have been characterized as informational and not required to be public. Much depends on definitions and interpretations. According to this excellent manual put out by the state auditor from its open government unit, uh, and everyone should read that, a meeting is a prearranged gathering of a majority for the purpose of conducting, transacting, or discussing public business and should be open. Fact-finding informational meetings are just that. No discussion or deliberation allowed. And that's the difficulty. Certainly when one reads the comments of the administrator and the individual commissioners, it sounds like discussion uh, and that even conclusions may have occurred. In any case, given the past history of this body, for example, the Transit Authority, uh, the county airport, the quarry project, and so on, the public has reason to be skeptical of your interpretation and understanding of the intent of the Sunshine Law. Uh, the statement that you routinely have such information meetings without public notification is further cause for concern. The subject mentioned at this current information center, possible budget cuts, decreased road patrols, increased township cost sharing, trans transit cuts, and anything else that might have affected, that, uh, that might have been affected, are excellent topics for open meetings. Where all, where all of this could be, dis where all of us can be informed, hear the facts, opinions, understand how you arrive at decisions, and feel that we, the citizens who pay those taxes and vote, are respected enough to be informed too. That's the intent and spirit of open government, which is too much neglected at the national, state, and local levels nowadays. Um, uh, over the past nine years, this body has had, has it had 
an improved record on public records availability and on allowing public participation at meetings. For a short time, you scheduled public study information meetings. Maybe you need, maybe you should reconsider doing that again. Last year, Cindy Lees of the Chronicle Telegram did a study of how much time you spent in executive sessions versus open meetings. We need such a study uh, of the past year, too. Thank you. Good morning. I'm a, a former deputy sheriff of Lorain County, and I'm currently an advisor to the Lorain County Deputies Association. I was the founder of the organization back in 1982. Can you state your name and address uh, Dave, for the record? David Knoll, N O L L. The information we received before the meeting, David? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no wonder you looked familiar. <laughs> yes, and, and actually, I wanted to take a, I wanted to thank a couple people. I wanted to thank Commissioner Blair for coming to the association meeting not too long ago. And I think that exemplifies what needs to be done. I, I'm in the private sector employee now, and I believe that communication is essential to good government and to, to keep peace amongst all the employees. And right now, that is what I'm attempting to do as an advisor for the association. I had a meeting with them last night, and I can tell you that due to the recent press, there is a lot of concern. I mean, basically, this is these people's livelihood as it was mine. Um, years ago, and not that much has changed, in 1982, I can recall handling a domestic where a woman was going to drown her child. And at that time, I was in Elyria Township. This was south of Wellington. I was the closest car. These problems have not gone away. Right now, there is many, many times where we have a north car and a south car on road patrol on the midnight shift. And to me, that's unacceptable. We're asking these people in the county to forego these, the, the, the luxury of having a patrol. That, that to me, is not an option. And I, I don't think we can go down that road. And I wanted to thank Commissioner Kokoski for her foresight in her vote today because I believe we have to look at these budgets seriously. We cannot eliminate a road patrol. I don't believe that is an option. Commissioner Blair lives in the township. I, for one, if I was living in the township and needed help, I want somebody there. These are life and death situations we go into. I don't know how many times I stopped cars on midnight shift by myself knowing that the closest backup unit may be 20 miles away. And that's not acceptable. I mean, we have to be looking at increasing the road patrol, certainly not eliminating it. The Ohio Revised Code, as Commissioner Kahlo stated in the press release that went to the Plain Dealer and several other papers, there is no state law that requires the sheriff to have a road patrol. This is true. There's also no state law that says he can. not And there is also no law that says we can just eliminate this. I never said it, David. I just said versus mandated services when I was talking about the upcoming budget cuts. We were talking about what was going to happen possibly in two weeks. I never said I wanted them reduced, but versus mandated services, the jail operation is something he's mandated to perform. Right, but what I'm saying is around those things. the association and the membership is tired of hearing the argument that the state law does not require a road patrol. That's not an acceptable response. We are one, there's only one county in, in Ohio, which is Cuyahoga County, that does not have a road patrol. So there's 87 others that do. And it's just not an acceptable response. To say that, that's like telling these people thanks, but no thanks. We appreciate what you do, but you're not needed. And we can cut you at any time. This is the, I mean, if I was a sheriff today, I would be looking at employment elsewhere. And these are good people that are probably going to be starting to put in civil service exams elsewhere because what future do they have when they see this in writing? And what the, to address the other issue, which I talked about in the letter, is that the, the county engineer's office is required by law to have a scales truck and to provide a deputy to operate that vehicle, to operate those scales. That's not an option. That is by Ohio Revised Code. That is a law. And that is not being adhered to. And the county engineer has said that they will, they will pay for the scales, but will not pay for the deputy. He does not have that option. And the Board of Commissioners, by law, has the, not only the right, but the obligation to enforce that. And that's what we're asking in that letter. Your, uh, your sheriff agreed to that. He cut that deal with the engineer. Not well, he's not my sheriff, number well, one. <laughs> okay, pardon me, I forgot you are retired. I apologize. Okay. But that deal was made for the sheriff's department with the county engineer's department. We were not part of that. We were asked to approve an arrangement agreed to by the county engineer's office and the county sheriff's department. Okay, this board did not broker that deal. No. Okay, they did. 
Oh, and, I, and we're not blaming you, but we're okay, asking you now to, to step in. I see, uh, I see the report is furiously writing there. I just want right. to uh, make sure that, you know, we're as accurate yeah, as we possible. We a month and a half ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had nothing ago. to do with that yeah. arrangement oh, I know. whatsoever. <laughs> but now we're, we're asking you to step in as sure. the law requires. As well, the law I, I, the sheriff and the engineer reached an agreement, reached an arrangement on how to handle that. But apparently not a legal agreement. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's that's our problem. Well, so we're I, asking have the you board taken, of commissioners to, have you to now step in. A, have you taken it up with the sheriff's department? Yes, we have. <laughs> and the response you received, I'd be interested to hear that. Well, right now I can't comment on that response, but basically we have been given the go-ahead to ask you to to continue, as the board of commissioners can, to enforce this. So I strangely don't see anybody from the sheriff's department here to support you. <laughs> I am representing the sheriff's department, the association. Well, the association, but the administration. That is, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> the deputies. <laughs> okay, but the administration is not here asking well, for. Well, I can't right? help that they didn't come. Okay. Uh, back to the other I'm, question in hand. Uh, I, Madam I, Chair, just, just a second, uh, David. If I may interject, I think as commissioners, we we should ask Jerry to look at this letter and our legal responsibility with respect to the funding of that. Right. Thank you. And, and Commissioner Blair, we had talked about this previously at the other meeting. So it is something that we did attempt to bring prior to this letter. It's not new to me. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and so basically we want, we want to look at the options. We don't believe the option of eliminating a road patrol is, is viable. And we want to be able to look into other options. We, I mean, it, it's very disturbing to see, and I know the press, and I know how they quote, and I know they're not always accurate, and they take things out of context. But the way it comes across in that letter is that we don't, you know, we're going to cut budgets here first. And we're going to cut them with, David, this, with the road. I never control. wrote any letter. That was just in the No, I mean, I'm saying oh, the letter okay, right, that was, I shouldn't say the letter, but well, the I'm report that was in the place. I'm always going to get the beating and Debbie's right behind you. <laughs> There's a need for the road patrols. I just think we have to find more creative ways of funding right. them. You need more people. The people are moving up to the townships. The population's increasing. They need, they need more protection. Good. Maybe it'll help with Maybe the census. I don't know if it's going to quite help with the <laughs> census in two weeks, but <laughs> we have to find more creative ways. And, you know, look at different the joint police districts, and such as Perkins. Township has a police department. Akron works with Fairlawn contracted to increase the road patrols. What started us is they were asking us uh, on the information that they were talking to township trustees about a levy to increase the amount of road patrols. They were telling us what they were working on mm -hmm. and they were talking about guarantees from a resolution from 92 or 93 that I wasn't even aware of okay. on an amount of staffing level. I can't talk about any guarantees on where the money is going to go. Well, see, in the staffing level, that resolution, which is 1992, right. that was back, and that was post or prior to the uh, the shooting involving Deputy Hathaway or Sergeant Hathaway right. now. And since then, we had five increase, like an increase of five people. But that five has been divulged into other areas, not the road patrol. So basically, the road patrol has not changed since I was there in 1982. And there's a need for more officers out there. <laughs> there is. Right? Yeah. And the FBI population. standards. It's just a matter of how it's going to be funded. Right. And those are the issues that are going to come through here in every department. Right. I mean, it's not just sheriff's department. We just had to be sitting with them as we were talking about, you know, the jail stuff coming up and going to Colorado in September with them to look at the new jails and stuff, things we have to address quickly with the overcrowding. And it right. came up what they were working with with the trustees. So I mean, yeah. we've got that through the prosecutors, the judges. Every department's going to have to look at how they do their budgets if the population shifts. Right. Well, that's what we just wanted to get on record to say that we... No, it wasn't a personal thing to the sheriff. Okay. We were just talking to the sheriff at the time. If I had been talking to the auditor or the prosecutor, right. it would have been the same discussion. We have to look at ways to cut back. Mandated services have to be provided. Mm -hmm. And then after that, figure out more creative ways to provide the rest of the services you do, not cut them away. Right. Okay. Well, that's what that's what we want. <laughs> so, right. we just wanted to express that and get that on the record. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, David, for coming. Good morning, commissioners. Good um, morning, Debbie. I'm Debbie Kuhn. I live in the village of Grafton right now, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to say I'm glad that you clarified that, Mr. Kalo. Well, the papers don't always print everything that goes on, and when, so I'm just making it clear. I didn't say to get rid of them. We have to find more creative ways of staffing them. Is all, Debbie. I, I mean, that's what all government entities have to do with the shortage in funds, so. Correct. I served on the jail levy, and um, I was very involved in the jail levy. And prior to doing that, I was the one that went out and petitioned the county commissioners back then to add the road patrol back to the 1980 layoffs that we had. 
um, and I feel very strongly about it. I've kept up on budget requests from John Rokesy on the jail tax, what it revenued, and I know that there is a um, interest account of what the jail levy money accumulates, and that money goes back into the general fund. And one thing that I would suggest is maybe looking at that to see if we could take that interest and curtailing it back to the Sheriff's Department and letting them use that money for the Sheriff's Department to prevent them from having to come to you guys for additional money or anything like this ever happening again. Um, I know we talked about it before a long time ago. Um, it's just an idea. Um, the other thing that I would like to say is that maybe we need to f uh, form some type of a committee to look at the possible resolutions to this and get township people involved. Get the citizens of Lor Lorain County involved because I can tell you there's a lot of concern out there. Um, I don't live in a township anymore, but I have family in the township, and I feel very strongly about it. And um, I think you guys can understand where I'm coming from. Clarification. Uh, first, uh, we're still waiting on the budgetary number. You know, we're waiting on the DOD census numbers to come in. Department and, of and, and, and I have no idea how this issue got so prematurely blown out of proportion. There has been no discussions uh, of any depth concerning any cuts or anything other than we're all on edge, uh, each commissioner, waiting for these numbers because I've been peppering them with information for two, since they've been in office. Um, Mr. Kalo's position before he was in office. And uh, so I, I, I don't, nobody's made any decisions and nobody said County Administrator, go start working on the budget and the appropriations and slash this or cut this. That those discussions haven't occurred. And <clears throat> I'd like to put that clarification out there because I submit the appropriation to you each year. And I've received no additional guidance as of yet from the board. And the second thing is, the as far as interest on the jail money, we're giving them over $3 million a year above and over what they're bringing in from their sales tax. So will you... So you, I don't know where you're saying this interest accumulating and we're taking. We supplement them every month significantly, and as we should, and we need to to keep the jail open. But it's it's in excess of three million. Uh, Lisa, do you have off top? You had that figure. Three hundred thousand dollars a month we're giving them. So three point six million dollars a year then. Above and over what that that quarter percent brings in. But that's just to operate the jail, correct? Correct. That's not for road patrol. Correct. No, that's just okay. jail operations. Right, and, and that's what that money was earmarked for, was just the operation of the jail, not the road patrol. Well, again, with the quarter percent that, that was passed in the mid-90s, and we all knew when we went off the half percent and down to the quarter, we all knew there wasn't going to be enough money for the long-term viability and survivability out there. Uh, but because the taxpayers rejected so many times and we didn't have a lot of support, remember we dropped it down to the 0.25, mm -hmm which was ultimately passed, but it didn't have as much legs, as every, and everybody knew that. So the general fund is providing about $3.6 million to supplement that quarter percent as it is. I thought I interpreted your comments to mean that there was interest coming on a surplus or some of those funds to the general fund. There, there isn't. You can see that. You, you can understand that now. Yes. Yes, I do. I just wanted to see if we could look at alternatives before we understand. go talking about layoffs and getting people in the township uproared and the citizens of Lorraine County, because it's not a township issue. It's the whole county. Um, you know, the Sheriff Department does back up the city of Lorraine, the city of Elyria. There's been times when they had to take over for the city of, of Lorraine and Elyria. And I don't think that it's a township issue, it's the county issue. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. I, I just want to interject really quickly. Um, what we had talked about the meeting, Commissioner Blair, if that was something we could make viable to have perhaps a meeting sometime with uh, some of the commissioners, at the association meeting as representatives of the county. Well, let's I call it a public meeting so we make Shirley happy, okay? Okay, that's <laughs> fine too, but I think it would be good to communicate that to, to, the, to the association, you know, so that they, they are aware of it, what's going on. I mean, it, I know what it's like for a police officer to read stuff like this in the paper and think, you know, I'm not being thanked for what I do. And, you know, it is very despondent. But, but I try and reiterate and did last night with them, and I think they understand that, that you guys are out there hopefully fighting for them. 
And I think it would be good, and I think that's good with all departments of the county, that management should periodically have a forum with them, with the employees. And it just, that communication means a lot to those employees. That's all. Thanks. Communication's healthy. Since that gentleman was uh, allowed a second coming, I'm showing up again. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, I'm glad to hear that Mr. Kalu, at least, and I assume all of you, had indeed been hearing what Shirley Johnson was saying to you. Um, but I would just simply like to point out that, for example, on today's agenda, when there was a considerable amount of detail given by Mr. Cortez on the transit uh, plan, the, the transit building plan and so on, that was extremely interesting and very useful to the general public. First of all, to understand what's going on, what some of the complications are, what some of the costs are, and to give us all an idea of just exactly, or more or less generally, where indeed taxpayers feel their money is going and how thoughtfully it is being allocated and so forth. Similarly, uh, although I trust Commissioner Kukowski was joking when she mentioned that Mr. Cordez's report had been that long and she was wondering even if she should have asked him for one. That was an extremely interesting and informative uh, and detailed uh, series of remarks about the airport, about the problems of zoning, about what's being done about it and so on. And again, it gives us an idea of how the county is uh, people are working, what they are doing, where the problems are, what costs are likely to be, and so forth. And all of that, in short, adds up to the greater possibility of trust in our officials and in their thinking. And I certainly urge that while it may bore you all or it may make you all feel your back is to the wall, <clears throat> or may it take, maybe it will take up a great deal of time. It is very, very important, if only from the point of trust. There is so little trust in our national government nowadays. Please don't let's continue that part coming down to the county. Thank you, Elizabeth. David Ashenhurst okay, Overland. Do you. you use your three minutes yet, David? Uh, I, I plead for that same little second bite of the apple, and, and it'll be a very small one. I, I, I just want to underline what Elizabeth said, but add one other thing. We are aware that, uh, especially in this particular case, there are several public officials, all elected countywide, who for in some areas have we understand authority on the same level, but also with budget uh, questions and, and compromises, sometimes going, it's, it's like you don't really control these other countywide publicly elected officials, but you do have uh, budget authority and things like that. And we've watched, as you've said, why are we voting on this annexation if we don't have any discretion on it? So as this particular 